The time has finally come. The NVIDIA RTX 4000 series is here. Kinda. As NVIDIA's very own Jensen Huang just announced the shiny RTX 4090 and RTX 4080 based GPUs. So to save you some time, I've simplified it all down, taken out all the bloat, and I'm serving you up all the information you need to know. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Hello mate, you all right? Yeah, just got all the bits from my banging new gaming PC. Just gotta put it together. It's gonna be so much better than yours. Oh, right. What did you get then? The latest Intel 12th gen processor, a feature packed motherboard, and 32 gig of DDR4 memory. See, miles ahead of yours. <laughs> you, you realize that board needs DDR5 memory, don't you? Don't tell me you went and bought the wrong stuff. DDR4 is so 2014. I can't believe you was that stupid. <gasps> what? No, you're joking. What should I get then? For me, I'd be looking at Corsair's newest Vengeance DDR5 kits, or if you're wanting that all important RGB, then go for the Dominator Platinum RGB. Oh, you are a lifesaver, thanks. But where can I find out more? By clicking the link in the description below, of course. <laughs> and you call me the stupid one. In typical Nvidia fashion, the keynote for GTC 2022 started talking about what they were going to go through today. And of course, they spoke about AI, cloud-based products, and of course, Omniverse. But the reason we're all here is GeForce and the new RTX based GPUs. What are the specs? How do they perform? And more importantly, how do they compare against the current generation Ampere range of cards in both performance and value for money? Well, to start things off, unlike previous keynotes and announcements, Jensen wasn't in his typical setting of a kitchen, spatulas and all, but instead was there in what looked like the Omniverse. Now, I admit, it looked semi-realistic, but you could tell it wasn't real in the truest sense of the word. And if anything, it looked like he was actually in front of a green screen. Now, before they even got onto the meat and potatoes of the GPUs, they showed off Racer X, which did look pretty damn special. And if anything, it looked like something out of a movie from Pixar or similar. But the key point was that the short segment was being rendered off of a single Ada Lovelace based GPU. So talking of Ada Lovelace, it's the third generation RTX card and Jensen announced three models today powered by the TSMC 4N process that's been optimized specifically for GPUs, which in turn allows them to house up to 76 billion transistors, up to 18,000 CUDA cores, and a whole host of new goodies, including a new streaming multiprocessor and SM shader execution reordering, which actually allows rescheduling to work on the fly, which makes the GPU even faster in games. Now, while not huge amounts are known about kind of what's under the hood, Jensen was keen to show off the new third generation RT cores, which speeds up ray tracing instructions by up to two times, along with fourth generation Tensor cores that combined with the Ada Lovelace based GPU can give two to three times increased performance in ray tracing based games and 25% in overall game performance, according to Nvidia. To show this off, along with Racer X, Nvidia showed the performance difference within Cyberpunk 2077 with DLSS 3, as well as Microsoft Flight Sim with both DLSS 3 and ray tracing enabled. And results looked interesting, showing the difference of 53 FPS versus 108 and 63 FPS versus 134 in different scenes. The only issue is that it's kind of hard to see exactly how it looks on a 1080p video. So put it down to us and other media to do the real tests, as we all know how Cyberpunk looked when you went in hard on DLSS before by adding grain into the scene. So hopefully things have improved massively there. I guess we'll have to wait and see. So the GPUs themselves, the first to be announced was the RTX 4090 based on the AD102 300 GPU, featuring 16,384 CUDA cores and a boost clock speed of up to 2,520 megahertz. It will also feature 24 gig of GDDR6X and launches on October the 12th at 1,599 US dollars. Now there's no concrete word on TDP as of yet, but rumors suggest 450 watts could be the magic number with higher models available from AIBs if they so wish. There were another two cards announced today, both sharing the same name. The first was the RTX 4080 with a 16 gig model based on the AD103 GPU featuring 9,728 CUDA cores and a TDP of 320 watts. Though sadly, you'll have to wait a little longer, as this is actually launching in November for 1,199 US dollars. Along with that, and what was assumed would be an RTX 4070, it's actually another 4080, but a 12 gig model. Based on the AD104 GPU and featuring 7,680 CUDA cores, comes with a TDP of just 285 watts. 
This, much like the 16 gig model, will be launching in November for 899 US dollars. And that's kind of all we've really been told. So not a huge amount of information, but Nvidia did show off kind of what's capable, but with no real context. But they did claim that the Ada Lovelace GPUs, or more likely the RTX 4090, would be two times faster for rasterized games and four times faster for ray tracing based games. Along with this, compared to the Ampere based predecessor, the new flagship will offer twice the performance at the same power. And the Nvidia themselves have actually managed to overclock the GPU past three gigahertz in their own labs. He did go on to talk about a few other cool things, including Portal RTX, which I've got to admit, I got quite excited about as I love the Portal games, and the difference between the original and the RTX version actually looked pretty damn amazing. And all was apparently created using Nvidia's very own RTX Remix for game modding. According to Nvidia, 9 out of 10 competitive games are successful thanks to mods that have been made for them. Now, using RTX Remix and the ability to use AI enhanced modding, you'll actually be able to enhance your favorite games, export the mod pack, and play with the RTX based render. I just hope these can be shared and some kind of a community can be made from it, because that is actually pretty cool. And that's it. I've got to admit, I'm excited, like I am with all new launches, but I'm also left wanting more, which is kind of maybe what Nvidia's intentions were all the time to give us enough information to get us excited, but also to get us kind of speculating about some of the other figures, which while it wasn't announced specifically, our sources claim the CUDA core counts and clock speeds that we kind of featured here are actually extremely accurate. Now, one thing we can talk about is pricing. $1,599, $1,199 and $899, which compared to the current generation Ampere-based GPUs, it's a price rise. But with anything, including groceries or a pint down the pub, prices have gone up. So I guess we have to deal with it. But who knows, as time goes on, we may see these prices drop, very much like we've seen on the current gen. Though that's had other factors to play, including crypto, what's gone on in the world with COVID and so much more. So I wouldn't exactly expect history to repeat itself. So what do you think? I mean, for me, it's a bit too early for kind of me to chirp in and say whether you should buy it or not, as we've only actually seen Cyberpunk and Microsoft Flight Sim with DLSS 3 and ray tracing enabled. No bar charts showing the uplift of the previous gen, no other information to kind of paint a better picture. So I guess you'll have to wait for when I get cards in my hand so I can throw them into our test bench and see what they can really do in both pure rasterization and ray trace based titles. When we do get our cards, we'll be testing in over 30 titles. So you won't want to miss out on that. So let me know, what do you think of the announcement? What do you think of the three cards? Will you be buying one? And more importantly, what do you think about the prices? For me, I'm gonna remain on the fence until I see some concrete figures. I mean, all in all, the keynote was good, but for the GPU side of things, it just all felt a bit rushed. I just expected more on the GeForce side of things, but I don't know, because the other segments went on for kind of what felt like forever. But as I mentioned, maybe, just maybe that was Nvidia's plan all along. Always kind of leave them wanting more. For now, I'm gonna leave you wanting more. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, then a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, consider supporting us over on Patreon, where you get a ton of benefits, including exclusive behind the scenes content and access to all of our testing data for our videos. That aside, I'll see you in the next one. See you later guys, bye bye.